one. Hello, everyone, everywhere. Pastor Robert Thibodeau here. Welcome to the Kingdom Crossroads podcast today. We're so blessed that you're joining us. You know, there is no doubt we are living in a very tumultuous times today. I mean, the entire earth is heaving with unprecedented events. Societies across the globe are grappling with profound moral and ethical dilemmas. Israel's at war, and the profound words penned centuries ago are resonating today with eerie relevance. Amen. Today, Dr. Christine Van Horn is here to share information that carries weighty implications for our modern world. I mean, we are looking at a few scriptures today from 2 Timothy, a letter written by the Apostle Paul as he provides poignant insights into the characteristics of the last days. His writings serve as both a, a mirror reflecting our current times and as a compass pointing us to a path not yet taken. Are we living in the shadow of these prophecies which Paul talked about? How can believers navigate the stormy waters of today's worldly culture armed with these God-breathed scriptures? Well, Dr. Christine Van Horn is here to help us unpack these thought-provoking verses, helping us to bridge the gap between ancient wisdom and contemporary challenges. Together, we are about to go on a journey through these scriptures, seeking clarity, inspiration, and most of all, hope. Hope amidst the uncertainties of the end times. Dr. Christine Van Horn is an author, teacher, and speaker. She's the author of six books, with three of them focusing on teaching character and foundational values. She's been on the Kingdom Crossroads podcast a few times, and you can find those interviews in our archives. Amen. Help me welcome back to the program, Dr. Christine Van Horn. Christine, it's so good to talk with you again. I've been looking forward to our discussion today. Oh, yes. It's so good to be here. I am I'm very excited for our discussion today. So um, I am stopping. Are you are, are you OK with my dogs are barking and all kinds of things? Yeah, I don't hear anything at all. Praise the Perfect. Lord. OK, Amen. so no. let me just for repeat sure. that again then. Oh, you're fine. We got it. It's on there. Yeah. OK. I didn't hear anything. But let me just ask you this. Other than that brief information I just shared, can you tell us in your own words, who is Dr. Christine Van Horn? Oh, thank you so much. Um, I am a, a doctor of Christian theology. So that's where the doctor comes from. I spent 30 years working for um, emergency management. So I'm a certified emergency manager. So I speak from these perspectives. I taught a program called uh, Character Club for, for children, teaching them character. And I have focused so much on my recent years on talking about character and teaching character. And, and that's where my heart is. And, and I'm always focused on good character. But what I'm going to talk about today is something that is not good character. Amen. So yeah. it's, you know, signs that we see in the last days that are bad character. And, you know, it, just as you said, this is something that Paul warned Timothy, you know, about. Wow. And um, uh, so that's what I just want to, to go through uh, here today. Because we see so much of this negative character in the world today. So it's it's appearing before our eyes. And, you know, so much is often said with uh, Matthew chapter 24 and the different signs that we will see and the wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes yeah. and things. But this is also a sign to look at the character of people. And yeah. so uh, that is that is what I'm going to focus today by reading. Um, and, and studying with you, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Amen. And Amen. I, one of the people that I have studied a lot is uh, Rick Renner. Mm -hmm. And he has a couple of books that I'll mention at the end. But he has a quote in one of his books. Uh, and, and this is important. I think it's a warning to all of us. And he says, as a committed Christian, you have a responsibility to live with your eyes wide open to the events that are occurring around you. Amen. And, and we really need to, because the signs are there. Yeah. The, the word of God provides us so much information. And this is out of, um, you know, second Timothy chapter three, as you had mentioned, let me just read it. And then I'd like to, in dialogue with you, kind of unpack what all of Absolutely. this really means. So verses one to five, this is out of the New King James Version. So I'm just going to read it in its entirety to start with. Mm -hmm. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Mm -hmm. 
for men to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. But I'm also going to end with talking about verses 14 to 17, because there's hope. There is instruction for us Christians to know what to do when we see all of these things around us. So it's it's not like we're left, you know, just seeing all of these signs and then wondering, okay, what do we do with all of this? Amen. Um, so uh, let me just kind of go through this a, a little bit. And some of this is from Rick Renner's, the studies, the, the one book that I had mentioned, um, oh, I, Last Day's Survival Guide. And also he has a book called uh, Signs You'll See, before the before Christ returns. And so some of those books I, I've studied in in what I'm about to discuss. And he teaches from the Greek. And uh, he is someone that I know pretty well. I've actually traveled with him to oh, Turkey. Amen. Yeah, to study the churches of the of the book of Revelation. And he he has a great study through the Greek. But let me unpack this a little bit. So verse one says, but know this that in the last days, perilous times will come. And there's really a great deal of information just in that one verse, because when um, Paul is saying, but know this, it, again, looking to those original Greek words, it is really emphatic. Know this. It's, it's important. It's absolute. It's a command. It's yeah. heed and understand all of this. It's not casual. Mm -hmm. it, it's really strong. And then he says, um, in the last days, now the last days, you know, really started at Pentecost, but we're in the last of the last days. That's right. That's right. It, it's coming to an end and it's a warning to us now. I mean, what was written was really written for us in these times so that when we look at these words and look at these phrases and different signs uh, that we can really take heed to what things are, are really going on here. But God has chosen us to live in these end times and he's anointed us for it. So it's nothing that we should fear. Uh, we should know that God has given us the, he's equipped us for being able to, to do this. Yeah. And then Amen. perilous times comes from a Greek word that means treacherous. It's, you know, nobody knows how to react to the things that are going on. And it also is the Greek word um, that can be translated fierce. So out of the original Greek, what I thought was really interesting is the only time that that same word for perilous here um, is used is talking about the demoniac on the other side that, that mm -hmm. Jesus encountered and how people were so afraid of him because he was so fierce. So it's the only two times used in scripture, that exact yeah. word. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that says a lot, what, what people yeah. were, you know, thought was so fierce back then. That's the same thing that in these end times that we face. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I know, you know, in Paul's description, uh, in second Timothy verse one, three, one foot through five, it paints a vivid picture of the moral decay of these last days. I mean, and how do these verses basically correlate with a broader biblical narrative of the end times. I mean, and, and give us some parallels to today's society sure. and culture. Sure. You know, all these things are going to be coming, you know, it's, it's promised these will come. So in, in verse, um, starting in verse two, it says, you know, that men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. And I'm going to give you some of those examples. Um, it, you know, it says men will be, it's going to happen. We can expect this to happen. And lovers of themselves, we live in a me generation where, you know, not talking about individual people, but if you look at society as a whole, very self-focused, self-absorbed, 
self-consumed, very self-centered, self, self, self. And, and we see that all around us today. And, and, and that's, that's one of the signs. Yeah. Lovers of money, uh, you know, people want more and more and more. And, and we see a lot of greed in the world and people being covetous for the things that they have, where that didn't used to uh, occur. You know, you and I can look back on several generations, to, you know, parents and grandparents, and we didn't see these things right. to the level that we see today. That's and true. And people who are boasters, they're ones who brag all the time. They have their own agenda. You know, they'll, they'll lie if it really will help them to get their self-agenda taken taken care of. And being proud, it, this is so around us right now. You know, it's that attitude of superiority. And look how all the, the sin around us today is attached to the word pride. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's almost like that word was put there for this time because th that's what we see. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's really, you know, that it, it's in, but it's pride, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's being forced upon others to try to accept it. But, you know, as Christians, we cannot. Exactly. Exactly. You know, today we, we clearly see that, that our society is deceived, as you said, in all sorts of ways and verses one through five, also describe people having a form of godliness, but yet denying its power. How does yeah. this apply to believers today? Believers today. I mean, is it a warning of sorts to caution us about these so-called false prophets or false teachings that are happening all around us? It, it is. Um, it also means we have had such a departure from the faith. When I was young, most people went to church and, and we don't see that now. And you look at the the warnings to the churches in the book of Revelation chapters two and three, and there was the lukewarm church, Laodicea. And often that is referred to as also a sign. It was a real church, but it's also a sign of what we're seeing today. And so many pastors are either watering down the message or they're afraid to speak out the word of God because it might offend somebody. And, you know, culture says we have to be inclusive of everyone. And, and that's taking away, that's a form of godliness, but it's not the power of God. It's not the true word of God. True. And I think yeah. that's what that's really referring to. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, but what about the role of believers? I mean, I've talked about just pastors and ministers, but believers, I mean, given the warnings Paul shares about you know, people being lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, and so on. How can believers be a beacon of light and truth during these challenging times that you're talking about? Staying connected to the word of God, studying the word of God, not veering from the word of God. And when you see all these things are around you, all of this pride stuff as an, an example, you just need to not be part of it. Um, you know, we are called to be in the world, but not of the world. And that's, that's what we really need to do in, in this particular time. And, and with this ungodliness that we see around us, just stay true to the word, stay true to what God has told you to do. If he has a mission for you, and it may be, you know, the salvation of your family, it might be witnessing to people, do it no matter what society as a whole says, you just need to stay true to the word of God and, and knowing the word of God so that it's buried in your heart and you can be able to say those things as they are needed. Yeah. You know, we're looking at this, of course, from the Western perspective. A couple of days ago, I did an interview and this lady had married a Muslim man. He was a Christian. And mm -hmm. was, when he was nine years old, when he got born again, living over in the, a Muslim nation. And uh, he was bold enough to stand out on his porch step, start preaching about Jesus, was kidnapped by the authorities, mm. beaten and tortured at the age of nine. Oh, but he no. refused to refute Christ and uh, made his way to the United States, uh, got married to this lady that I was interviewing. And, uh, you know, now they have a ministry that ministers to the Muslims, of course, the Islamic faiths, but, uh, said so you'd be surprised at how many Muslims, you know, uh, as with anything, you know, you got the, 
you know, the, the tip of the iceberg that is, that are the fanatics, right? Yes. And I uh, said, you know, 10% maybe of the Islamic faith is, are the fanatics. They're the ones getting all the bad press, but said, you talk with a, you know, the normal Muslim person that has come to the United States, et cetera, said, they just want to worship. They just want to, you know, achieve the American dream like everybody else. And he said, if you start talking with them, you know, and just say, do you know about Jesus? And he goes, no one's really explained it to me. You know, can you explain who Jesus is? Like, that? Oh, that is and, good. And so that's, you know, they, they'll get into a taxi cab or an Uber and, you know, have a Muslim driver and, and he'll say, you know, some are you a Christian? And she goes, yeah. And then he's like, can you tell me about Jesus? Cause you know, I'm, I heard about him, you know, and, and that's how the conversations start There's no condemnation. They just think, you know, who, what is it about Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, you don't have to go and beat him over the head with the Bible. Just ask a question. And, and that's so encouraging. It when, is. I mean, what you see on the news is opposite of what is in real life. And that's not just for that, but just about everything else going on. Like is it pride and all this other stuff. And, uh, you know, they corrupted the rainbow that God put as a yes. sign in the sky and, and all this other stuff. Right. But we read the scriptures, God breathed in verse 16. How do you believe this divine inspiration of scripture can equip believers today? I mean, will it help us to navigate these last days? Yes, it, it really does, because um, we need to keep in our hearts everything that we have learned. We need to continue studying the word of God and anchor ourselves in the word of God. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So we know it is true. It's exactly what God's heart is. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I want to turn again to Rick Renner because his teaching is so incredible. And the, the word for inspiration in the original Greek translation also means the creative power of God. So when we speak out scripture, we are using the creative power of God in the words that we say. And that that is absolutely, you know, it's so important that we do that. And it empowers us to be able to get through these last days the way that he really wants us to do. We're here, as I mentioned, for we're here for this time and for the yeah. purpose that he has. And just relying on scripture as being inspired by God is very critical to what we need to do in these last days. You just said something I want to emphasize, but we are here for this day and time. And we are. I've shared that before. You know, a lot of people say, Oh, if I would have been born back in the 1800s, you know, with the wild west, you know, living, it would have been so much better. I said, no, it wouldn't have, because before the foundation of the world, yes. God preordained that we would need to be here right now. There is a calling on us right here, right now, not a hundred years ago, but right now, you know, think about if Abraham Lincoln would have been born now instead of back then. There's no way he could be elected today. <laughs> you know, not at all. Right? That's true. And, uh, but, you know, and I'm in a conference or something, and I use that as an example. I'll say, look, before God created the world, he preordained that you would be sitting here in this conference this day and this hour to hear an inspired word that's going to bless you and move you forward. And when you look at it from God's way, because he, he, he planned the whole thing out. Yes, know? he did. And there's nothing, you know, if, if a bird does not fall from the sky without him knowing about it, how much more has he preordained our destiny in this as well? And, and what you're talking about today actually ties right into that God inspired scriptures. Well, when we got born again, it was not a happenstance. You know, and, and it didn't occur when you were six. It didn't occur when you were 60. It occurred whenever age you were at, because God said, now I need you, you know, and as you know, and a lot of people are, well, then I don't have to do anything because when it's time, it's the, no, 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 no. If you hear the word and it's resonating in your heart, it's time. It's not like that nine-year-old Muslim boy 
It was time for him to do. And everything he suffered has gone into his ministry today. That's why he's so effective in his ministry today, because he can relate. (laughs) It's true. And the things that you go through, you don't always understand why, but God will use those experiences for you to be able to spread his word later on. Amen. And and that that goes to my next question about how we can apply these verses in in 2 Timothy personally. I mean, considering Paul's warning that we should remain rooted and grounded and what we've learned through scripture, what practical steps can individuals take to ensure they remain rooted and grounded and steadfast and able to discern the truth in these tumultuous days in which we find ourselves today? Studying the word of God is number one so that you really understand it and and praying ahead of time that the Lord opens up your heart to really understand the meanings that are in there that he really wants for your life. Mm-hmm. And then and then be able to tell that to people. Mm-hmm. And, and the more that you study the word of God, you're hiding it in your heart so that it will come out automatically. And the, the Holy Spirit will guide you when you need to say uh, different things to people. And and he'll bring it to your remembrance. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to close, what else do you need to share, want to share, you're inspired by God to share about these verses that we studied today? I want to encourage all of your listeners to go to them. Go to these verses. It's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5, and then 14 to 17, um, that I are so critical. Everything in between is as well. But the the problem is stated in the characteristics of the last day's generation. Look at those words, you know, understand what they mean and personally try to relate to that so that when you see these things going on around you, you can recognize that this is not godly. This is what Paul was talking about in these last days that would be seen. And then looking at what you can do to, to, you know, hide these verses in your heart to, um, you know, to be equipped, you know, the, the Lord has really equipped us for everything. So when you encounter situations that tie to all these um, negative characteristics, just know that we are equipped because he chose us, because he put us here at this time, he's equipped us. Mm -hmm. So it's something to be reassured about that, you know, we're living here for a reason. We're here for such a time as this, and we need to be that, that light to the world. Yeah. Amen. Let's, let's look at that word equipped a little bit. Sure. Because being in the military, Okay, I started mm-hmm. off working around radars and all that stuff, right? And I understood a little bit about electronics and all that stuff because of, because of that. But if you were to drop me, you know, with a parachute into, you know, uh, a situation that the Navy SEALs, you know, would deal with, I'd been totally lost. I have an mm-hmm. idea of what we're supposed to do, but I was not mentally and intellectually equipped to do what they do but at the same time you take them put them out on a radar tell them get it set up ready for operations they would have no clue but oh this is an on button maybe i can push this okay now what you know type thing. that's right and so you're equipped by the training that you receive we yes. are equipped as believers by the word that we are receiving which you know some of the well, what, what should what part of the bible should i read to find out what my calling is Oh, that's easy. Genesis to Revelation. That's correct. <laughs> that is correct. That is the answer. Mm-hmm. Genesis to Revelation. Let God speak to you. You know, and like my calling in the ministry, Ezekiel chapter two and chapter three. You know, many other scriptures resonated with me, but that was my calling. I have called you to preach to the people of your own nation. I'm not sending it to a nation far away of a strange speech or hard to understand because if I sent it to them, they'd listen. I'm saying to your own people because they don't want to listen, but that's okay. I've made your head harder than their heads. And that made complete sense to me because I've always been called a hard head. You know? <laughs> See, <laughs> you, know? you didn't know what to apply that way, right? <laughs> exactly. But when I read that, it made 100% sense. 
you know, and that mm-hmm. was my call because I, you know, it was just, I guess when that happened, because my wife and I were in our Bible uh, devotion time, sitting out on the porch drinking coffee, I think all the blood must have drained out of my face because she she looked up, said, "What's wrong?" And I was like, "Nothing. I just read this wrong." So I went back and read it again and it said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> The word was true and it applied to you. <laughs> exactly. 100%, you know, and uh, so that was my calling to the ministry. Somebody else, it might be Matthew 24, second Timothy chapter three or, you know, but I'm not called to do what Moses did. That was his equipping. He was equipped for that. You know, he was, I, uh, I'm not called to do what Paul did. He was equipped for that. You know, his training, you know, Pharisee of the Pharisees, you know, that was his equipping. He could understand these scriptures so well that when he found out about Jesus, it just made complete sense that he answers this one, this one, this one, this this has to be him, you know, type thing. And nobody else was called to do that. Just him, you know, and that's, but you don't, again, Paul understood that because he understood the Old Testament and the Torah and the Talmud and all that stuff. And was educated in that. That's how that was his equipping. So that when was he found out about Jesus and seeing all these scriptures applying directly to him. He said, This is him. This is the one. You know, nobody else believed it, but here we are, two thousand plus years later, talking about what Paul wrote today. You know? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, when he when he wrote that, uh, it was not something I think he expected that would be right. so manifest 2000 years a, later it was a personal letter to timothy <laughs> it was it was amen so that's that's the equipping you know it is the and equipping so so jesus well each person you are equipped to do what you're doing with your books yes i'm equipped to do what we're doing with this podcast yes you know? And there are other people, Rick Renner, oh, God bless him. Oh, he's equipped to go live in Russia, survive yes, in is. Russia, be an influence in Russia, you know, on, on their yes, television and everything else. I mean, that's his equipment. I couldn't do that. You know, that's not what God has called me to do. The calling and equipping is is where each individual has to see what his part of the puzzle is. Because when we put all the pieces together, they should see Jesus. Yes. Amen. I mean, Christine, again, this has been so interesting. Praise God. If someone wanted to reach out to you to ask questions, obtain more information, how can they do that? How, how, how can someone get in touch with you? Absolutely. A couple of ways. One is my website, which is uh, drchris.co. So it's not .com, but it's for drchris.co, drchris.co. They can email me at chris at drchris.co. And I have um, all my books and, and information on my website. And I also have a podcast and that's how we initially right. got connected. Amen. And mine is called Timeless Truths. Mm-hmm. So you can look for me on uh, Apple, Spotify, and everything else uh, yeah. for Timeless Truths. And uh, you have recently been a guest on mine. And Praise God. they can Amen. listen to that as well. Amen. Yeah, highly recommend it. And uh, I'll put links to all this in the show notes below, including your podcast. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank Amen. you so much. Amen. Now, folks, as we conclude our discussion with Dr. Christine today, it's evident that ancient wisdom holds profound relevance, even in our rapidly evolving world today. I mean, Paul's words echo in today's society and serve to remind us of the timeless truth and the ever-present need for spiritual discernment. I mean, today's discussion has not only unraveled the layers of these scriptures, but also helps us to understand the importance of grounding ourselves in the word amongst all of the unpredictable winds of change we're facing today. Amen. I urge you drop down the show notes, reach out to Dr. Christine Van Horn, click the links to her books. I have those down below as well. Praise God. You need this information folks, especially now in this day and time in which we live. Amen. Christine, thank you again for taking the time to come on the program today and shed light on the, the intricate interplay of prophecy, faith, and our current culture. I mean, I appreciate your insight and your wisdom on the messages of hope, 
resilience and your unwavering faith that Second Timothy imparts to us today, helping us to keep our moral compass pointed towards his truth and his righteousness. Amen. I just appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Pastor Bob. Folks, that is all the time we have for today. For Dr. Christine Van Horn, myself, Pastor Bob, reminded to be blessed in all that you do.